Michael, for a closer look at the legal implications of the case. I am now joined by attorney Andrew Stoltman. He says the Raj verdict is a game changer. Stoltman is a securities attorney who handles civil insider trading cases and represents investors in lawsuits against banks and brokerage firms. He joins us now from Chicago. Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Why is this a game changer? Well, there are a lot of extremely nervous executives and hedge fund managers on Wall Street right now because there is nothing that has a better prophylactic effect on Wall Street in terms of preventing insider trading than a very long prison sentence. And it looks like Raj Raj Ratnam it will probably get somewhere between 15 to 19 years. So I think this has just changed a lot of things. The utilization of the wiretaps is so new and so original. This is the first time we've seen them in an insider trading case that I think this is going to change a lot of things on Wall Street. What was the critical point in the case, Andrew? I mean, the wiretap certainly uh, set a new precedent in terms of using that as evidence. But when we got down to that, the little bit of tape about Goldman and that stock, that is pretty clear cut, black and white insider trading. So why is the industry worried about this? Well, I think the industry has to be worried because prosecutors, about every 10 to 15 years, prosecutors decide to crack down on insider trading. We saw it with Ivan Bolsky back in the 1980s. Uh, you know, we've seen it with Michael Milken. We saw it to a lesser extent with respect to Martha Stewart and uh, Sam Waxell. So this is kind of the new turn. This is the new uh, time where prosecutors are hammering hard on Wall Street executives, hedge fund managers who may have engaged in insider trading. So he's going to appeal this case now, at least that's what we heard after the verdict was delivered. What happens in the appeal process? Well, this is going to take a while, and I think Raj Raj Ratnam and his lawyers will obviously present every argument possible. I think the only area where they may have a chance, and I think it's a long, long shot, is on the wiretaps, because the judge very reluctantly about a year ago agreed to allow the tapes to be introduced. As you know, usually these tapes are only used in murder cases and mafia cases. This is the first time we've seen them in an insider trading case, so, you know, that's probably his best chance, but I think he's going to end up serving a very long prison sentence. And Andrew, let's talk about the investors in Galleon Group. Where do they figure into this picture? I don't know if they have too much of an impact, but what I think is clear is that to the extent the hedge fund has had losses in the last couple of years, and of course who hasn't in 2008 and 2009, I would expect a number of civil suits against Galleon to come forward in the next you know, year or so uh, using this conviction on all 14 counts as a central piece of the lawsuit. Andrew, we talked a little bit about the number of years that he could potentially be spending in prison, but what about a monetary punishment? And this is where perhaps the investors figure into that. I mean, what, what type of monetary punishment could he be facing at this point? Well, the prosecutors pegged the crime at $63 million, so I would be absolutely shocked if at a minimum he's not required to disgorge that $63 million. The judge also has a great deal of discretion as to whether to impose a fine. I expect he will, but I expect it to be in the millions uh, range rather than 10, 20, 30, or even 50 million bucks. Now, what do you think the lawyers for some of the employees of Galleon Group are thinking about now? They go on trial next. Are they going to take away from this, from Roger Rotten's trial, any key points and use it to their advantage? Well, the one thing I was a little bit surprised about that the future defendants may learn from is I was surprised that Raj Raj Ratnam did not take the stand. Uh, he's a self-made man. He was worth over a billion dollars. He is extremely articulate, extremely bright. I expected him to testify, even though defendants usually don't in criminal trials. It's possible in the case starting next week, the defendants may say, you know what, we have to roll the dice so we don't end up in the same position, and they may actually testify. All right, Andrew, thank you very much for joining us today. Appreciate the insight. That was Chicago-based attorney Andrew Stoltman.